Well, hello. Hi guys, YouTube, ladies, gentlemen, friends of Daily Vinyl. I know I've been gone for like a week, uh, but you know, it's been a whole year and I've never gone that long without posting a video and although we're wrapping it up, I just sort of thought, you know, let's take a break. So here I am, back at it. We're going to finish out 365 album reviews in 2016. Kicking it off right now, though, at 312, I want to look at something called Anatomy of a Ghost. And I've had this big plan to do like a week of screamo or emo or something that I couldn't really wrap my head around uh, the direction I wanted to do it. Uh, because it's such a big part of the roots for music for me. Uh, kind of grew up in the ska punk scene and all my friends like that. I found, I guess, on my own bands like The Beautiful Mistake, Anatomy of a Ghost, and nobody I was friends with was into that stuff. They didn't really like it. But I couldn't put it away, and it became an evolving scene that was humongous after some time. And, uh, you know, sort of identified with that. And I've sort of grown apart from it, but there are still albums like this one that I can put on and sing cover to cover and thoroughly enjoy. And so for that reason, I think it's important to know your roots, but without uh, sort of structuring it too much, rather than do like a scream a week or something, I think I'm just going to, while the weather is nice and cool and reminiscent of like, you know, further, seem forever days for me, the early November, all of these things that are, whether they're emo or screamo or post-hardcore or even metal, whatever, just sort of blend together to make up this sound for me that was high school. And if you're like me, about 29, 30, 31, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're tuning in for this video, I am sure you do. So the next few videos or so will probably feature this kind of music. So if you're staying tuned as the channel you know, progresses, you can subscribe now, get the updates. We'll continue down this pipeline. But let's kick it off with something that I think is special because it is the only one that was released, which is Ev Avancy. Evanesce? 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 I don't know. Nobody's ever said it to me. I've never heard the uh, proper pronunciation. But I can tell you that the band is called Anatomy of the Ghost. They were from Alaska, moved to Portland, uh, originally on Fearless Records, uh, re-signed here and billed through Rise Records. But probably one of the biggest staples that you have to mention is that the lead singer, only singer at this time, John Gurley, and the bassist, Zach Carruthers, formed a very popular band known by the name of Portugal Man, who have tons of records, and they still play, and actually just saw them only like two weeks ago now. And very good, very, very good. Um, completely different, though. Nothing similar about these two bands. Anatomy of the Ghost starts as an emo band very emo-centric in the styles of the guitars and even this sort of stripped-down production, um, the way the song structures build, it's reminiscent of something like Saves the Day. But there are screaming parts in there. They sort of bring it back around. It sort of amplifies at moments and even sometimes get a little tapping on the guitar, you know, makes it have that screamo flair. What I want to say about it, though, is the really cool way that, like poetry, the sort of free-form versions of lyrics that were put together to build these songs. And you could sit and read the lyrics uh, to a track and literally sort of jump from the first line to the last line to the fifth line to the tenth line to the second line. And it's not... It's not where they've taken the lyrics and just sang them in an order so it tells a story. They've just written words and then picked and choose from that sort of, I guess, that cluster to build structure within the songs and vocal melodies and how that arrangement works. And I think it's cool because a lot of bands that came out of this space, especially the ones that sort of went on to get a little bit of money, like Hawthorne Heights or something, they, they forced structure into a sound that I think is bred out of lack thereof. It's supposed to be somewhat messy. It's supposed to be somewhat dirty and gritty and unfriendly. And that's why when it sort of became overly produced, um, you know, story of the year, I stopped liking it. 
and it's not because I was too cool or whatever. Uh, it was just, you know, that that demeanor from which it was bred was sort of lost in all of that. And I think that happens with a lot of genres of music. You know, everything, as soon as you can put a price tag on it, becomes something else, I suppose. But this record, it's uh, it's 10 or 11 tracks. Uh, just, it, it's... It builds a really good ebb and flow in that, you know, it sort of starts with Birth of a Mile, which is a great song, and you know, instantly sort of get their tone for the guitars that carries throughout the album, it sort of braids their sound. You can't not mistake John Gurley's uh, high falsetto vocal. If you didn't know better, you might think it was a girl. But by halfway uh, down the record, um, you know, Distress in the control, control Tower really starts to pick itself up. Uh, and, and even all the way through the end, Last Transmission, which is sort of a, a really slow pace introduction song, it, it works in coming that full circle. So I think it, it showed early on, uh, at least as musicians, their ability to structure an album, maintain a, a sort of a stylization, and sort of build, uh, you know, a wall of their own version. So like, a, you know, their own version of that sound. Because there are bands that came from this space that sound identical to each other. And, you know, it would be really easy to say they're just biting off this sound or they're biting off that sound. And while the genre itself wasn't uh, completely uh, new, they made it their own. Does that make sense? Sort of like re-identifying within a brand your own version. And I don't think that things always have to be original. Uh, if that was the case, you wouldn't have Hendrix covering the Watchtower, you know, those kind of things. But... Um, it certainly helps to put an original twist on something. So, you know, you can eat at the same burger restaurant for 10 years and suddenly a new place pops up and they do it a little better and that's okay. You can still go to both of them, right? So, enough analogies. Let's look at this LP. I think it's really cool. I have two copies here, as you can see. Um, and Rise put this out on the... Uh, it's a double LP package uh, in the gatefold, and the sleeves are really nice, this matte black. And uh, the coloring on the LP itself, which I'm not like, oh, I have to buy an album because it's colored, but sort of the uh, love affair I have with this style of music sort of lends itself to some of these cool color variants. And uh, this sort of blue blast it sort of looks like a bowling ball almost, but uh, it works with their, you know, their sort of... Um, their stylings of letters and, and that sort of playfulness that was so, you know, everything was death or ghost or, you know, it just works. And I like it. I think it looks really neat. It's certainly striking. So, there's that. It is a little hard to get out of the sleeve, but um, nice sleeve. Very nice. And it's cool. Inside the uh, gatefold, you've got all the lyrics. Like I said, um... If you're familiar with this record, you really should try to go back and read the lyrics as they're written uh, while you listen to the songs because you'll be hunting and pecking the whole time. It's kind of interesting how they do that. Um, but certainly uh, not afraid to take a few risks with this first album. It's kind of a shame they didn't put out a follow-up, even just an EP, to sort of see where they were going before they dissolved the band. But um, for what it's worth, this is a very... Uh, concise album. You know, they don't really leave a lot left on the table, and I'm sure as musicians, as somebody who plays music myself, I can appreciate the desire to do something else, to do something different, to try to push the envelope and make more original sounds, and that's certainly what I would call Portugal the Man. They're unique to their own, and that's why they continue to put out good records over there. So, if you're into Screamo or Emo or something, and you've not ever heard Anatomy of a Ghost, this album was 10 years old in 2013 when this re-release was put out. Uh, it's a little older now, but it still, still plays quite well. If you like things like the Beautiful Mistake, or A Static Lullaby, Taking Back Sunday, check this out. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a great record uh, that just sort of, for me, one, to like have nostalgic memory about. But it's also, uh, it's, it's full of energy. You know, they, they are great at building transitions amongst songs that have way too many parts. So it works very fluidly, like water filling the space. Their songs just kind of come together naturally. And it's, it's good. 
it's just sort of a shame that that's all there is. So you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it, but it is uh, something that I think is neat and as a sort of a historic thing, if you're a Portugal Demand fan and you've never heard of this, I think you should you should go back and, and hear it, check it out, just take it for what it's worth. Um, little side story, FYF Festival, uh, I want to say it was like 2011, and it was still when it was at Hans Park or whatever, and I was just there with one friend, and of course uh, John and the guys were there at the time recording, um, and he told us about how they were working with... Uh, Danger Mouse, and it was going to be some big stuff coming, and blah, 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 and he was super nice. I just, I was like, hey, and I was like, no, I don't want to bother you. And he's like, no, what, what is it? And I was like, you're in a Portugal man, right? And he's like, yeah, 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 and he stepped and took a picture with us, just talked to us for like 15, 20 minutes. Super friendly guy, a little shy, a little small, but awesome dude, and um, I was like, he's like, oh, you, you like our music, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I, I've seen you guys a bunch of times, Open for Our Expandits, one of my favorite bands. And uh, I've listened to you since back when you were Anatomy of a Ghost, and he got like bright red, like embarrassed almost. Um, super awesome. If if you don't know, you should search Anatomy of a Ghost here on YouTube. Live footage and just see him in his his most scene and just jumping around in the crowd and just he had full of energy, which is kind of funny because early days of Portugal Man, he was very shy. He would like cover his face with a hat and he didn't want people to see him. And I don't know if that was. Uh, you know, something or not, but even to this day, he doesn't say anything in the mic, really. They have, like, a hype guy off to the side who does all that. He just sings. So, very cool, but, um, you know, it is the, uh, I guess, the entire aesthetic that comes with Screamo Emo really just amplified here with Anatomy of the Ghost. So while we continue to do a few more of these, I don't know if it's going to be for three more days or ten more days or the rest of the month, I don't know. I thought this was a great one to kind of kick that off. So if you uh, get bored, please look for me on Facebook. I am at backslash Daily Vinyl Online. You can post me videos or links or suggested reviews, those kind of things. Or if you're more about pictures, I love Instagram. That's my favorite social media spot. I am at Daily underscore Vinyl. That's where all this sort of started. Just me sharing pictures of my records. Um, and from there, of course, right here, YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Get all the updates. There's... 300 plus reviews sitting back there. Check them out. There's some other random vinyl stuff for you to see and uh, some just not. You know, I got, uh, I get bored and I put little movie montages together. You want to check those out. Small adventure set to music or something like that. Anyhow, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Drop me a line about Anatomy of a Ghost if you want to. Tell me what you think about this record, especially even more so if you haven't heard it and you're just hearing it for this uh, first time today. So, uh, anyways, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Have a great week.